Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his free bird bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge Right, well thank you for downloading And uh, today it's episode 60 of the Tech Bytes audio cast For Thursday the 22nd of September Admittedly by the time you receive this it may be a Friday But uh, today we've got a very good show Because Rusty's back up with us again And uh, I think it's the third episode in a row now Rusty's been available to come on So we're going to be covering quite a few topics today First one's probably going to be Linux um, The boot being hampered by Microsoft plans I think that's just been in the news recently We've got um, StatusNet, its latest release uh, Version 1 Beta 4 We've got some great Creative Commons music And we're going to be covering a plethora of other topics Such as Windows 8 and Windows Mobile 7 failure as well Along with Google Antitrust and the Google Plus is now open to the public. So without further ado, we'll go over to Roy, who hopefully is going to start us off. And uh, Roy, it's all yours. Hi, team. Hi, Rusty. How you doing? Good to, uh, good to uh, be back on the on the show. Uh, I just I, I just thought I'd mention something very quickly. Uh, we don't do the show as often as we used to. And one of the reasons is uh, his uh, team's job basically requires that he's doing quite a few uh, days in a row. So usually we get a chance to record only uh, once in a week and a half or two weeks or something like that. Uh, so that's not because we lost interest in doing the show as often as we used to. It just happens to be the case that, you know, the work commitments and everything else get in the way. So anyway, uh, one of the things I think we did today is, as, as before, you know, the past four shows, we actually write down some of the topics we'll go through. Uh, and we try to pick quite a few of them which are maybe... Uh, a day old or two days old, so some of the things that happened, uh, say, a week ago or a week and a half ago, we might kind of miss some of them. Uh, we used to cover a few more things. Uh, we used to cover things a bit more exhaustively back when we did the show uh, every couple of days. Uh, but the first thing I, I found, uh, this is a story that I think was first published uh, in some way uh, by a Reddit engineer uh, on, uh, I suppose it would have been something like Wednesday. Uh, he was writing about the uh, booting uh, system or the booting process in, uh, in Windows 8, uh, what's supposed to be booting process based on the uh, presentation, uh, based on the uh, plans, uh, which Microsoft keeps kind of vague. The, the, the short story is they're going to make it a bit more difficult to boot anything other than Windows uh, on particular machines that choose to uh, do a process very similar to TVization, which means that the system is not going to boot unless it contains a certain sort of signature or a certain sort of characteristic in the system which it recognizes it's being a, you know, authorized uh, uh, binary uh, with which to run the machine. And of course, Linux is one of those supposedly dodgy things that Microsoft uh, stamped computers, you know, with a Windows logo on it, might not want to, to run. Uh, so that's that's been major in the news and almost, almost every uh, Linux blogger I've seen so far actually wrote about it. And some people who are from the Microsoft side of the camp, they try to kind of belittle the uh, importance of this. And they try to say, oh, no, it's just it's just making it a little bit more difficult. Oh, Microsoft is trying to offer us a feature and quick boot and everything else. Uh, well, I, I, I personally can see both sides of that. I mean, is it really any different than that little micro partition that Windows has to be able to find in Windows 7? I, I mean, it's, it's that more is what that is. It's it's clear that's what they want to do. Yeah. And like you said, like the Microsoft people said, they're trying to add things, but in typical Microsoft that's fashion, stuff. in a way that makes it harder to use anything but Microsoft. Yes, but what we know based on antitrust evidence, this is something I'm supposed to write a blog post about, I just said in the time so far, I'm just accumulating some stories, and I've read, I've read about 10 stories about that. And it very much reminds me of what they did with ACPI before, is mm-hmm. if you look at the documents of what they did uh, antitrust on antitrust evidence being brought against Microsoft, they actually do speak about using those features intentionally to sabotage the internet, uh, to sabotage the uh, hibernation in Linux, to sabotage the booting of 
of, of what they call alien operating systems, which basically means anything but Windows. Um, and in this case, it's very much reminded me also of what they do with the MBR, where they say, well, we're not trying to treat the, uh, the Linux partitions as being uh, authorized and being something that we can handle, uh, because it's too complicated, because it's, it's confusing the user, and they always find a way of describing what they do, which is malicious, as being a feature. You know, we're trying to offer a better experience, or it's going to boot faster. Uh, in the case of Word and Office, they say, we're just trying to add some rich functionality, or Silverlight is supposed to give you nice videos and improve the web. Of course, it's... Well, no, up, it, you know. and it, it comes down to a, to a byproduct of something. Microsoft realizes they're not on the radar anymore. They realize the new targets for nefarious things because if if uh, the U.S. government and even to a point the EU stand up and go, oh, we're going after the evil Microsoft, everybody kind of goes, oh, okay, but in that like last millennium's bad company, why aren't you going after Apple and Google? And Microsoft knows that, so they know they can kind of get away with things that they used to get in trouble for, and they're going to push that as far as they can. I, th I think it's quite important to mention as well that Microsoft has made no official statement in regards to all these rumours, and some bloggers and some commentators have taken that as an admission of guilt, so to speak. Um, but the question I had was just like the browser, uh, where we've got now the browser ballot, which many people think is a bit of a toothless tiger. But even so, would Microsoft be able to get away with these type of actions where it would be hampering competition effectively um, on machines? with any sort of new scheme they've got for Windows 8, and uh, it, it just struck me as rather strange that they'd be able to do it, and they would go and challenge them about it. Because of, like I said, they're not the number one target on the radar anymore, and if the open source community gets ingenuitive enough, they can figure a way around it by completely redesigning things they shouldn't have to redesign. Uh I mean, to, to me, it seems a little bit madness because at Microsoft, you can't, you can't argue regardless of uh, what you think of the operating system. The operating system itself has been heavily pirated and heavily uh, copied around the file sharing networks. Now, and and Microsoft has unofficially, officially yeah, said they prefer that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, they, 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 they're fine with it. What, uh, what, what strikes me would be if, if Microsoft did go out their way to make it difficult for other operating systems to, uh, to go side by side or even sort of replace uh, Windows 8, uh, we would just see a hack. We'd see some sort of uh, crack or hack very, very short soon after, and it, that would be you know put onto the trackers and uh, Usenet or wherever, and people would just be using that. I mean, we've seen it in China. We've seen it all over the place uh, where Microsoft products have been pirated and hacked and changed. So, it, really, to me, in this day and age where you have so much choice on the desktop or on all the form factors, it just seems a little bit suicide now to be able to to start putting restrictions on which would just hamper users. I mean, look at DRM. You have software which the pirated version is far more popular than the original product because this pirated version has been uh, had the DRM uh, removed, which is a hindrance to the user. So um, it, it does sound like a very silly uh, silly way to go for Microsoft, especially now well, when they're... For, for they're... anybody who's old enough to remember when Kazaa was king, I mean, the most popular version of Kazaa was Kazaa Lite, which was not made by Kazaa in any way, shape, or form. It was a hack version of Kazaa. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, it's going to be very interesting, especially when when we look at uh, Windows 8 on a tablet uh, form factor. This is going to be 12 months time, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I'm not sure we'll see. To be honest, I mean, so. you're talking about, I mean, what Android will be out by then? Like four? Well, exactly, and, and this is a point I made. I mean, in 12 months time, that's providing everything goes according to plan. Microsoft's going to have its first product ready for the. For the, for the tablets, and it's going to be Windows 8, obviously, in 12 months. But then, mm -hmm. as with all Microsoft products, we always have a period of baking and people finding uh, features missing and complaints, etc. So you're looking at, realistically, 18 months before Microsoft has on the tablet a competitive product to Android and Apple. And in that time... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't know if we want to go into Windows 8 any that much, but it, it's... Um, the biggest hindrance Windows 8 is going to have at its initial offering is a lack of apps. And because they're choosing to make a unified OS where desktop Windows 8 is the same as the slate Windows 8, it basically anybody who sits down in front of a Windows 8 computer without a major redesign about a year from now is going to become incredibly annoyed with it. Unless they switch back to Windows 7, which I believe is that a feature of that's, that is a feature of Windows 8, isn't it? With uh, <laughs> you, you, you can fall back, as it were. Uh, oh, oh, well, see that they've screwed that up. Uh, <laughs> and, and no, 
Yeah. yeah, in Windows 8, you go down and you launch the start menu, but the start menu is now a tile-based widget menu like it is on Phone 7. Any